Good evening, and welcome to our final Lenten midweek worship here at Bethel Lutheran Church in Winchester, Virginia. Hi, I'm Pastor Dave Young, and I'm delighted that you are watching worship with us this evening. Please know that from wherever you are watching worship that all are welcome. And to help us best welcome you, I invite you to send me an email and let me know that you are in worship with us and how we best might be able to minister with you. Throughout this Lenten season, our theme has been Lent in plain sight, focusing on different objects that we see around us in plain sight. Tonight, our theme is oil. And again, Bruce Lothar will be bringing a message for us this evening. So now I invite you to take a few moments of silent reflection as we prepare for our call to worship. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We gather for worship in the name of the Good Shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a place before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Yea, though we do not know what this day or any day will bring, we know, Lord, that you are with us and will never leave us alone. You see us while we get up. And when we lie down, there is nowhere we can go where you are not, even the valley of the shadow of death. Help us to abide in the goodness and mercy you relentlessly provide. Help us to remember that you anoint our heads with oil, and therefore there is nothing we lack, nothing more we could ever want. Amen. Uh, good evening and welcome to Wednesday Lenten Worship. My name is Bruce Wilper uh, and I am a member of the Bethel Preaching Team. Our scripture tonight is the 23rd Psalm. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Please pray with me. Lord, we are chosen, anointed and blessed, changed, made new, and resurrected, guided, protected, and sustained, invited into your kingdom, transformed to do your work and your will. In your grace, we are all anointed. We may all be your hands. We may all be builders in your kingdom. We need only respond. We need only set aside our fears and say, here I am. Amen. Amen. I like to cook for my family. My day job is to write software for large corporations. I spend weeks coding changes to systems or finding problems or creating new functionality. When I'm done, my code is tested. Quality engineers spend days looking for my mistakes. Then, if they find none, the code is distributed to customers who wait weeks for the right time to apply what I've done to the systems they run. I never meet the people who benefit from my work. And honestly, the best thing that can happen when I send code into the world is that I never hear about it again. That means everything worked as expected. I solved the old problems and I didn't create any new ones. No news is good news. And bad news starts a whole new cycle of coding and testing. So after days of that, I like to cook for my family. Spending an hour or so moving around the kitchen, dealing in concrete things, making food that will be appreciated and maybe even cause a little joy for my family is good for my soul. I never get an email that says a meal I made six months ago didn't work and I need to start over. So I like to cook for my family. Very often, cooking dinner starts with oil in a pan. Heat the oil, add some garlic and onions, and often a family member will appear at that point. What smells good? What time is dinner? What are we having? My dogs enter the kitchen, carefully calculate the spot on the floor most likely to be hit by falling food, and lie down and wait. I add some ingredients to hot oil, and the household knows that a transformation has started. An unrelated set of stuff is becoming a meal. Not just food, but a break in time to gather the family and share what we think and feel. A moment to experience the peace of green pastures and restore our souls. An opportunity to reconcile differences. Time to stop rushing along parallel tracks and take a few moments to be a community. For a brief time, we transform our kitchen into the kingdom of God. The oil signals the start of the transformation. Tradition has it that the biblical King David is the author of tonight's song. God chose David when he was a young shepherd. God caused David to be anointed as a sign that David would be transformed into a mighty king among his people. We call Jesus Christ the anointed or chosen of God. He was transformed from the son of a carpenter in a different, distant province of a great empire into the living sacrifice that proves God's eternal love and blessing. In that sacrifice, which we celebrate just a few weeks from now, God offers to anoint us all. He invites us to dwell in his kingdom our whole lives long. Much like the hot oil in my pan, that offer of anointing, of choosing all of us, of blessing us, has the power to begin a transformation of who we are. When we acknowledge that we are chosen and anointed to be God's hands, 
we can begin to behave in ways that create joy, space for connection, and even reconciliation. The oil is the symbol of the start of the transformation. The 23rd Psalm promises many blessings to those who respond to God's call. Our needs will be met, will be protected from evil by God's staff, we will be guided to the right paths. We will experience goodness and mercy. There are a couple of costs to being God's anointed as well. We need to accept the rod that God uses to correct, correct our behavior. We will need to sit down with people that we don't like and resolve some differences. That might involve taking responsibility for some things we have been wrong about. Some of those right paths might not be where we want to go. We will have to change and leave our comfort zones. You might even have to stand up and speak publicly in front of the whole congregation. Often we find it hard to trust the promises of the psalm. The transformation that comes with anointment might be frightening change. The text suggests we might actually have to walk through the darkest valley. What if God forgets us or is not strong enough? We could end up stuck there, alone in the dark with an empty cup surrounded by hungry enemies. Why should we change from what we have been so far? On February 18th, the day after Ash Wednesday, NASA's Perseverance rover landed on Mars. The descent from orbit to ground took seven minutes. The delay in radio signals from Mars to Earth was over 11 minutes meaning that NASA engineers could not react to any unexpected events in the landing process. The lander, in effect, could not be piloted. Scientists had to program the lander and guide it to guide itself through Mars atmosphere and have faith in the work they did. The parachute on the lander that day held a coded message revealed later in NASA's photos. Dare mighty things dare mighty things. It was an appropriate sentiment. sentiment. Humans can only explore other worlds and understand our universe if we step out of our comfort zone and dare mighty things. Likewise, we can only achieve God's vision for his kingdom in our world if we step out in faith and dare mighty things on God's behalf. We must dare to let God transform us as David was transformed from a boy with a slingshot into a giant slayer and king. To live into God's mission, we must consent to be transformed. Mm -hmm. The oil is a symbol of the start of the transformation. As Lent draws to a close, what mission, what re reconciliation, what call to action seems too overwhelming to respond to? How can you break out of your daily routine, have a concrete impact, and maybe cause a little joy? Can you prepare a table for your loved ones, or maybe even those you struggle to love? Can you create a space for the kingdom to emerge? Can you say, here I am? Now is the time to dare mighty things. We are all anointed as God's chosen people, and we need fear no evil. Amen. Amen. Join me now in a time of prayer. Lead us and guide us into your paths of righteousness and peace, good shepherd. Lead us and guide us into places of comfort and restoration and rest and healing and wholeness, good shepherd. When we find ourselves exhausted, wounded, and marginalized. Lead us and guide us into safety and well-being, Good Shepherd, when we find ourselves clinging for life along craggy and narrow roads that can often lead into perilous moments of fear and sometimes even into the valley of the shadow of death. Lead us and guide us into confidence and courage, Good Shepherd, when we find ourselves facing trials and struggles, when those who would do us harm are bearing down on us, 
Lead us and guide us into faithfulness and defiant assurance of your presence and grace, good shepherd, that we may dare mighty things in living into your promises of goodness and mercy following us, if not leading us as we dwell humbly and worshipfully in your house forever. It is into your nail-pierced hands, the hands of a good shepherd who lays down their life for their sheep, that we offer ourselves, our prayers, and the world you love. Amen. not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
Good. 